just the start of the news review. I am joined by the MPP's parliamentary candidate for Bole Bamboy, Raphael Kuma. Yesterday we had a conversation that we aired with the NDC's candidate, who actually is the member of parliament for that area. Today we host the MPP's candidate, uh, Mr. Kuma. Mr. Kuma, a very good morning to you, sir. Can you hear me, Mr. Kuma? Yes, Ben. I can hear you. Um, good morning to you, uh, Jerry's listeners and viewers as well. Right. Uh, I mean, it's been nice meeting you for today. It's a pleasure hosting you for the first time. I've been looking forward to uh, that yes. opportunity. But tell me, even as we start, I always do this to members of parliament, but you're not a member of parliament yet, but I just want to find out. When you look at Bole Bamboy, it's quite an interesting constituency, and it's also one that is pretty known because the former president was MP there at a the time, among others. But what, what, what do you see in Bole Bamboy currently, and what makes you want to become member of parliament for that area? Thank you very much, Ben. Um, once again, I would like to say a very good morning to our Cherry's uh, viewers and all those that are listening to you wherever they may be today. Right. And also for me to use the opportunity um, to thank the party people in Bole Bamboy for um, doing me the honors to represent them. And for me, I am of the view that um, honor is a matter of uh, duty and then uh, responsibility, of which my, can I mean, my counterpart from the other side hasn't been able to live up to Epsetechi. So one of the reasons why I got massively uh, voted for from the MPP side, which I'm very sure would um, translate coming, I mean, to votes coming into 2024, January, I mean, December. First and foremost, I think that uh, we have to ask, ask ourselves, it's not about what the MPP has done, it's about what has the NDC government been able to do for its own people. <laughs> um, when I say its own people, what I mean is that uh, you and I are very much aware that our current uh, former president, John Dramani Mahama, is from the place. He's been an MP for three good terms. Um, he's been a vice president and he's also become a president of Ghana. On all of these occasions, uh, you've had him being the president or the vice president, and you equally have an NDC MP being the MP there. So, what we have to ask ourselves is that uh, for all of these, number of years that uh, they have been in the system, uh, what have they been able to do for our good people? Are you saying they've uh, done nothing? Because I can point out projects to you. You see, it will interest you to know very well that. You see, the area or the, 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 the age of politics of sharing of uh, Maggie and then uh, salt is over. And what I mean by this is the fact that Ben. No, no, I asked you a simple question, Raphael. Are you saying yes. they've done nothing? And if the answer is yes, then you can expand on it. If the answer is no, ben, ben, you can expatiate on it. When, when somebody is asked to uh, represent people, it comes with a huge tax and a huge uh, duty. It's a call to serve. And as we speak now, Ben, if you would have time, take your camera and come to Bole Bamboy. Let me give you one clear example. As we speak, okay? As we speak, Bole, in the hometown of our former president, John Dramani Mahama, we don't have a befitting modern market. That's the first step. Number two, when you pick the data for the census that was just done, Bole is one of the leading constituencies with high unemployment rates. So you will ask yourself, so what have they been doing over the years? And I can tell you that any good thing that you find in Bole, Bamboy, was done by the MPP. For instance, when John Ramani Mahama was the MP and at the same time the communication and deputy um, minister, we could not even have access to TV signals in Bole. All that we were doing was getting them from Ivory Coast. Again, we had access to um, Tigo and MTN service somewhere late 2005 under the tenure of uh, Dr. Achanso as the DCE. Meanwhile, our dear brother was the MP and then he was also the Minister for Communication. The Bole War Road, it was worked on under former President Yonajikum Kufo. Under the same MPP government, you see where Bamboy is located? It's just after the black voters, so there's a, a, a bridge there. Then the then NDC told us that both of where, where we find ourselves, Bamboy can never get light. And fortunately for us, under the... Wait, 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 hold it. I, I have to season this. You're saying the former president said that yes, where, where, where Bamboy is, you can never get light. 
Where, where, where yeah. did he say this? When did he say this? This was said, in fact, I, I'm very happy that you asked me this question. You said it sounds very ridiculous. This was said at the Chiefs Palace in Gambon. This is a thing that you can very... Do, do you have records of it? Do you have official records uh, of it? Was any story I'll, done I'll, on it? I'll do you have video, audio you. evidence? I'll try and get that for you. Hmm. Okay, you go ahead. Yes. So anything that you can see as a, a good thing in Bole Bamboy was done under the MP. Okay, um, so, so, so again, it goes back to my point. You've still not answered me. So in other words, you're saying everything that is good in Bole Bamboy has been done by the MPP. So in other words, through, and mind you, since 1992, the NPP has only held that constituency twice. Throughout, it's been the NDC. There have been different people uh, who have held that, that, that slot. Uh, I think, I don't know whether it's uh, Kletus Avoka, uh, who was there for a long time, and then the former president. Oh, no, ben, Ben, uh, the Bola Bambuis has always been the NDC. I mean, we have never had an NPP. Um, it used to be, um, 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 the later, I think, one, um, I don't remember the name, he left and then the JM came. So after JM came, then we had Honorable Saka. Okay, then I may be, I may be con keep confusing it yeah. with another constituency. But the point to be made is, you're saying that throughout this period, I mean, that even enhances the point I want to make. You're trying to say that since, and let's focus on the Fourth Republican experience, since 1992 mm -hmm. till now, the NDC, within how many years? Um, 31 years or 30 plus years has done absolutely nothing in that constituency. The last time I hosted Yusuf Suleimana, the member of parliament, he told me about his plan to sink boreholes, for example, uh, some of which he had not been able to sink, but he was pr projecting 17. He had been able to sink, um, and interestingly, I... <laughs> He was able to sink 12 of them. He sunk far, a seventh. He's going to sink another five. Um, he, he has this hospital in the area which lacked um, an incubator. They communicated to him. He communicated to the former president, John Bramani Mahama. They pooled resources and came through with an incubator. These, at least, are a few things I remember. Uh, I actually just saw him trying to reach out to me, and uh, we'll see whether we can, I, I don't know whether it's an apt time to connect him, Yusuf Suleimana, uh, but even with these, at least, at least, and I'm not trying to, at least something has been done. So the claim you make that anything that is of any good in the constituency was done by the MPP, it smacks a bit of, um, I, I can't ben, even understand ben, what ben. you're saying. Ben, 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 you see, um, um, yesterday I followed him keenly throughout the entire program. You see, our MP is very good at saying that I've done some of this and some of that. Okay. I was hoping you were going to ask him to indicate exactly where he has drilled those bowls. And I, and I bet you, he wouldn't be able to provide you with any answers. I know him very well. Oh, I see. I mean, <clears throat> I know him very well. He should be able to give us the places. And you see, this issue of uh, the Bole Hospital being, I mean, the path extension done by the former president and his wife. Ben, we are, all of us are from Bole Van Uh Let us be very careful with some of the things that we say. The truth of the matter is that the former first lady felt that Bole has been supportive, Bole has blessed the husband. So therefore, it's about time she gave back to us as a mother. And if you would recall, one of the reasons why we have a lot of um, NTCs in the brown apple. Hello. <clears throat> okay, I think we've lost uh, Raphael. Raphael, please try to reconnect. We want to have you uh, back, and um, we'll see. I, I will seek permission from my producer. Find out whether it's possible to let Yusuf Suleimana, who's member of parliament for that area, uh, join the conversation as well because it appears he has some feedback he wants to give i don't want it to turn into a fierce banter though it's the news uh we are reviewing but we'll see how that goes i was just engaging the mpp's parliamentary candidate for bole bamboy um rafael kuma uh he is my guest this morning and he is joining the conversation
So we'll try to see if we can get Yusuf Suleimana uh, as well on board, if we can call him on board or, you know, get him on Zoom. We shall see about that and take it from there. I see a lot of you uh, watching. Uh, I'd like you to share your thoughts on the discussion so far. But in the interim, before we get there, let me get on board. Um, something I was going to run by Rafael Kuma. If you look at the tail of the tape, and I wanted to run this by him, of course. Um, the Bole Bamboy MP on the NDC side literally said yesterday that he could go to sleep, literally go to sleep and support his colleague MPs on the NDC side, and that he would give Rafael Kuma a nice haircut. And I asked him, what kind of haircut? And he said, Sakura. Uh, in other words, he would do him pasa. That's 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 using our local parlance in that constituency's elections in 2024. But I I, I told him to beware so that he doesn't get the haircut uh, instead. But if you look at the voting pattern in that region, uh, Yusuf Suleimana says he's targeting nothing less than 70 percent. In the last election in 2020, he polled 67.68 percent of the votes. That's um, some 26,350 uh, votes. David Sedema, who is um, the MP, who was the MPP's candidate then, polled 12,585 votes, accounting for 32.32%. And of course, um, the rest of the votes went elsewhere, either into lost ballots or um, otherwise. So the tale of the tape shows that it is a strong NDC constituency. But only time will tell whether Rafael Kuma can wrest it from uh, the grips of the NDC. Rafael, are you back? Can you hear me? All right, so let's go online as we wait for Rafael Kuma to reconnect. And it says the National Security Ministry refutes claims its operatives deliberately killed two youth in Akan constituency. Um, that story there. And, and there's also, there's also, um, let's scroll, national security trying to cover up death of two youth. We brought you that story. Uh, he's the member of parliament in that area. I'll bring you that. Singathon, Alan Tremanting storms Akwaba village to support Asantua. Uh, quite a number of the politicians are going there um, uh, for whatever reason. Uh, yes, let's support, but sometimes it's just to score political points. I'm not referring to Alan Tremating specifically. I mean, we've had the, the vice president go there with Samia Wuku. We've had the chief of staff go there. Uh, we have Alan Chomatin go there. I'm always wary of these politicians. Let me just leave it at that. NDC mourns apostle, apostle in Tumi. Across drainage traps, urban roads wages wars on metal grates, war on metal grates, thieves. And then Trump election. Michigan Supreme Court rejects ballot disqualification bid. Then Judicial Service OSP unites to combat corruption. There are other stories there. But let's, let's look at the national security refuting uh, claims that its operatives deliberately killed two youth in the Akan constituency. Now, the national security ministry has dismissed claims of deliberately targeting and killing two persons in the Akan constituency in the OT region. This follows the death of two footballers in the Yazo community in the OT region on Monday as they were allegedly being pursued by national security operatives while attempting to transport cocoa beans to Togo. Now, in a statement issued on December 27, the National Security Ministry explained that, quote, the incident leading to the death of the two persons was purely accidental and not born out of a targeted operation, as accounted by the MP for the area. Now, while expressing their condolences to the bereaved families, they also urged the police to disregard the factual inaccuracies aimed at courting disaffection for the anti coco smuggling operation in the constituency. However, Setting the record straight, the ministry explained that the facts of the matter were as follows. One, in October 2023, the Ministry of National Security, in collaboration with Cocobot, launched an intelligence-led operation along the Eastern Corridor, which includes the Akan constituency, to prevent cocoa smuggling to neighboring countries. It goes on and on. But two, the anti-cocoa smuggling operations have so far been successful, with several persons involved in the smuggling activities arrested. Three, 
Regrettably, on December 25, 2023, one of the vehicles of the anti-cocoa smuggling operations team was involved in an accident when it collided head-on with a motorcycle carrying two persons, a development that claimed the lives of the two persons aboard the vehicle, vehicle or the motorcycle. In the immediate aftermath of the accident, personnel of the Ghana Police Service arrived at the scene to commence full-scale investigations. However, some aggrieved persons in the Akan constituency, guided by a misconception that the two deceased persons were deliberately targeted, vandalized the vehicle and set it ablaze. Okay. All right. So that is the story. Um, I don't know whether we have Rafael Kuma back, but for those of you watching, I want to find out from you. What do you make of this? Every day, every now and then, the police has got involved in this situation. People have died. We had all of these situations from Idra to other places. Almost every now and then, I can count, almost every three, four months, every quarter, every six months, there's an incident somewhere. And there's always justification for it. How can you justify the loss of human life? The anti-smuggling situation, all fair and square, good in our national interest. We may not be doing the best when it comes to cocoa, you know, what we're doing for our cocoa farmers. I remember the president a few months ago, and it's the highest ever, and this and that. Why are they smuggling? That's the question we should be asking ourselves. But that's not to justify that. In our national interest, we must maintain the situation. We must ensure that our cocoa production does not actually um, find, that is fine, we are not going to um, actually have all of this tassel. Uh, you know, in respect of this. We must protect our national interests. Recently, we've been told about, and I mentioned this in some of my blunt thoughts about Ecuador and the rest, you know, some of these countries are really coming up, again, ramping up cocoa production. But in trying to defend our national interest, if people keep getting killed at some point, then what are we trying to do? That's my question. Anyway, I, I, I get so saddened and angry when such things happen, and then we have the justifications, it wasn't intentional. It doesn't take away from the fact that these people are dead, does it? It doesn't. It doesn't. And it could be your brother, it could be my brother. That's the situation. So how are we going to account for these people? What do we do? In the grips of COVID, the president himself said, we know how to bring the economy back. Even that, we do not know whether that has happened. But we do not know, what we do not know how to do is to bring life back. What do we do for these two? who are gone, budding footballers. What do we do, Mr. National Security Minister? Do you have the power to bring them back to life? I want your quick thoughts on that. And interestingly, like I mentioned, Yusuf Suleimana, um, who is Member of Parliament for Bole Bamboy, has joined the conversation. I did mention he was uh, getting interactive earlier. Rafael Kuma has also, um, is, is also with us, but I, I hear the feed, he's lost out again. Please, Raphael, please, I want you back on the conversation. Please join the Zoom connection. Let's have this conversation. Um, to you, Yusuf Suleimana, uh, you started, <laughs> you reached out. What is it that you want to say? Uh, is it because Raphael Kuma is throwing jabs at you this morning? What do you have to say based on what he said? Hello, Mr. Suleimana, you have to unmute before you speak, please. Please unmute before you speak. Good morning. Good, good morning, Yusuf. Please go ahead. Good, but, so, but let, me, let me first of all say good morning to our cherished viewers and also say good morning to my younger brother, uh, Raphael. I listened to Raphael and so laughable. The first question I want to ask Raphael is whether or not he knows the constituency very well. And, 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 and uh, right, right, I get your point. I just want to throw this back to you as well, because he says, you're asking whether he knows the constituency. Yeah. Raphael says, yeah. you say you are sinking yeah. boreholes, you are doing this project, that project. Where are you embarking on these projects? He posed that question. He's not here. I'm posing that question to you. Where are these projects? Okay, okay. So let me, let me start. Uh, Raphael should go to one, a place called Sonyo. Right. Raphael should go to Kiape. Rafael should go to Mandare. Rafael should go to uh, Bale. Rafael should go to Timburi. Rafael should go to uh, Chache. Rafael should go to Mankuma. Rafael should go to Kakiase. Rafael should go to Bodhi. 
Ravi shouldn't go far. Joe boy, he's just close to Bamboy. He should go there. I have a bow hole there. Ravi should go to a community just after Joe boy, which is not far from Bole, called Carpenter. I have drilled two bow holes there. Ravi should go to Teslima. There's a bow hole there. Ravi should go to Banan Kanta. I have drilled a bow hole there. Ravi should go to Noyi. There's a borehole there. All right, uh, Mr. Mr. Suleimana, just just a quick one. Beyond the boreholes, <laughs> beyond the boreholes, beyond the boreholes. You told you told me about the incubator. I think Raphael was making a point about that. That is the former first lady, Lordina Mahama. I think uh, I, I think that's whom he was referring to, who you know said that or who suggested that. Uh, that constituency had given so much to her husband, the former president, who was formerly member of parliament there. And that is why they embarked on that project. Uh, and you're tying it to yourself as well. That, yes, you mentioned the former president, but what, what explanation can you give on that? So, Ben, I think that uh, if you listen to my interview very well, I said to you that the director of health service then approached me and spoke about the lack of an incubator. Right. Which I provided. Mm -hmm. I provided it. And the second phase was that I visited the hospital and realized two children were in one incubator. Okay. It was then that I complained to the former president and the wife, who then came in to build a modern uh, maternity ward as well as children ward, and then equipped it with many, many more incubators. All right, thank so these you. are two separate stories. Right, thank you for that clarity. So the first one, hold, hold, hold for me, the first one you got yourself. The other ones sure. together with the facility were funded or facilitated by the former president. I just want a quick one because, because Raphael will have a lot of questions. I just want to clarify this before I go to him. So beyond the boreholes, what else have you done in, in, these, in these areas? The Sonyo, the Kiape, the Mandare, the Bale, uh, the Timburi, the Twase, and others. What else have you done in that constituency? Bole Bamboy. So tell, tell uh, ask uh, Raphael, uh, the NDC started a polyclinic in Bamboy. Now, when it got completed, they could not operationalize it. I don't want to go to the far places. I want to come closer to where he lives. They couldn't operationalize it. He should go to the health sector, I mean health center, and find out who facilitated his operations. Okay. I had to ensure that, I had to ensure that they were giving motorbike, I had to ensure that they were giving seed money, how to ensure that they were linked up to national health insurance, how to ensure that the whole area was lightened by providing okay. street lights and what have you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Just hold for me, uh, Mr. Suleimana. Hold for me. I, I want this to be, you know, between the two of you. So now I'm going to Raphael Kuma. Raphael, you've heard what Suleimana has said. He's member of parliament for the area. Uh, what are your responses? Hello, uh, Mr. Kuma. Um, ben, I think I lost you a bit, so I'm back again. Uh, did you hear what? Did you hear what uh, Yusuf Suleiman was hear saying? Me? Yes, I did. I did. I did. Okay. Uh, what, are, what are your responses? I would like to um, greet my elder brother. Uh, yes. So I'll just go to that. I think uh, just on the sidelines. Uh, yesterday he said. Um, I was going to give me a Sakura haircut. I was about to get so, to that, uh, but since ahead. you started, go ahead. <laughs> and you know, and you know already he has Sakura already. So I'm going to give him a baptism of fire. Come twenty twenty four. So I want him to be a set boy. <laughs> yeah, so and, and, and Ben, you see, like I was saying, for me I am into this business of politics because I want to leave a legacy. Mm. And I want us to move away from the normal propaganda of politics and party uh, uh, communication. Famous, he gave a litany of names of community where he has jailed boho's for. Ben, uh, you see, my brother is trying to claim credit for what he has not done. Most of the things he has done was done under the MPP by a doctor. Achan. In fact, let me just give him just those that he mentioned behind my backyard in Bamboo. There's a, a place called uh, Carpenter. He mentioned it as part of his achievement. It wasn't done by him. As long as I was even in the primary school in Carpenter, I, I schooled there before. Primary one to primary six, I was in that village. Those bowls were done by the Catholic Church back then. It wasn't done by him. Go, go, go ahead. I want you to expand on all what he said before I, I, I go back to him. Ben. Hello, Raphael. Ben. 
Rafael Kuma. Hello, Ralph. Uh, this is this is not helping matters any uh, because I really want the MPP guy to also make his point on all what Mr. Suleimana has said, but it's not coming through. Uh, Mr. Suleimana, I'll come to you. I'll come to you. I just want to be fair in apportioning the time. But in the meantime, I'm seeing messages coming through. Um, Ibrahim Zina Suleimana says, Rafael Kuma, the people's choice, inshallah, Bale Bamboy constituency is already in your hands. And interestingly, this person is a Suleimana. Um, Nango Michael says, tell Yusuf Suleimana that we are all from the district and he shouldn't think that the seat is for the NDC, so we can't vote him out. We're surely going to get him out this time around. If it will cost some of us to fly back to Ghana to vote him out, we will do so. Ben, ask Yusuf to pinpoint the exact work he has done in the district so that we can stop voting for Rafael and vote for. Okay, but he just mentioned those if you were listening. Then uh, Nango Michael says, Yusuf is not being honest. Uh, he also says it is not true. Ibrahim Mwamba says, I want... Okay, so that's not... And then um, there is also Sarakbo Gabriel who says, Raphael is the new dawn. Um, I don't want to repeat because some of you are just sending repeat messages, but I already know what you are thinking, so I don't need to uh, go back to that. Um, Nango Michael says, the boho in Jogboy was done by Alhaj Salia. And, um, and one other by some Galamse company. This one says, Adams Al Hassan says, please, Mr. Host, Mr. Kuma is misrepresenting the facts. The records are crystal clear. JDM brought massive development to the area while Stroke Bamboy Road was started by Rawlings and completed by Kufour. Bamboy transmission lines were done by NDC. That made it possible for Otiko Afisa Jaba to commission electric or light in the 2008 when she was with the MPP. In summary, MPP has done absolutely nothing in the development across, but that is where I also have a problem. You can't say that a party has done nothing in, absolutely nothing in an area. Uh, this one says, okay, so you are referring to the national security issue. And um, okay, so there's, there's, maybe I'll just do this final one. Daniel Ametaku says, I'm watching you live. Your questions to the politicians are super. God richly bless you. Well, thank you. And you say voice for the voiceless. Uh, do we have Raphael back? Okay, Raphael, I, I'll go back to Suleimana, but I want to hear from you on the other points quickly before I go there. Yes, Ben, um, I want to also uh, say something just briefly. Uh, with the greatest of respect, yesterday you gave me a whole period for him to talk. No, this is, the, this is the news review. We don't have that time here. I'm coordinating yeah, here. So this is the news review. It's not an interview. Please, please understand. <laughs> Hello? Of the roads that he mentioned yesterday. Hello, Ben. Yes, I can hear you. Please go ahead. Hello, Ben. Yeah, so on the issues of the roads that he raised yesterday, I mean, almost all of them were, were false. For instance, he said all the roads that they left during their tenure was not done, I mean, was abandoned by the MPP. Let me give you one clear example. Uh, during the former president's first time, the road from Raphael, Raphael, your connection is terrible. I, this is what I'm going to suggest. We'll try to reach you on phone, okay? Uh, with a few minutes we have left, God willing, so that you can make your point, because unfortunately technology is not helping you make the point. I've been trying to get you to make your full point, exhaust what you have to say. It's not helping. So please, let's, we'll try to get you on phone, and then you summarize your thoughts. Yusuf Suleimana, this is the last bit I'll come to you on. Raphael, some members of your constituency are saying you are not being factual. Uh, Nango Michael says, point of correction, Raphael Yusuf did dig one borehole in Carpenter, not two. But these are the very people who are going to be voting for you. I don't know whether the NDC or MPP, but these are the people who are going to be voting for you or against you in that election. Are you still going to give the haircut you promised, the Sakura haircut to uh, Mr. Kuma? And what more are you going to be doing in 2024? If you have any reactions, this is the time. Younger brother, if not, the, the, the Sakura would have been one with bleeding. But because it's my younger brother, I won't let any uh, cuts uh, appear on the head. 
Um, he said, I've done nothing. I've mentioned quite a number of places where I've drilled boho's, just boho's. And now he's running away from that. Now, the problem with my younger brother is that he doesn't know the consistency. Ben, I just want you to ask him that where is Chenchere located in the Bole Bamboe constituency? He should tell me. So these are the problems. So he doesn't know the consistency. And whatever that goes on there, he's not aware. And that is why he can come out and challenge some of these factuals. In any case, the journey is there. I wish that one day you get the two of us in your studio so that we can be factual, we can bring evidence. Then we'll settle this issue. What I want him to know is that the constituency is secured for the NDC and that we have done so much. He's talking about electricity in Bamboy. I'm happy somebody has just said it. Every community in Bole was connected by the NDC. Just a few that were connected just last two years were about two. And even those ones, we had started them. There are quite a number of communities that we started in 2015, 2016. When they came, they abandoned them. But that is one of them. Okay, his own territory around uh, Babato, Chebenua, Dogli areas has been abandoned, even though we had connected the wires to that area. He should tell me, yeah, as a candidate, what has he done to ensure that at least, um, even before he became a candidate, he's been around that area. What has he done with his government to ensure that places like Dogle, Chibirinua, Babato are connected? Okay, uh, uh, we have Rafael Kuma back. He's on phone now. You were, you were saying, I should ask him whether he knows which area. There was an area you mentioned. Now you tell me where Chibirinua is located. Where? Chibirinua, Chibirinua. No, sorry, okay. you tell me Chenchere, Chenchere. Okay. All right. Uh, Rafael Kumar, do you know where Chenchere is located in your constituency? And he's saying that there are a lot of things he has done that you do not have a certain knowledge of uh, the area. Uh, what's your reaction to that, Mr. Kumar? Hello, Mr. Kumar, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Mr. Go Kuma, ahead. can you hear me, please? If you can, please go yes, ahead. Sir, I can hear you. I can go hear ahead, you. please. Go ahead. Okay. Yes, Ben, I, I, I believe that there are a lot of important things for us to discuss other than identifying the locations of places. Uh, what I'll say is this. The Chachet Border Room was awarded by Smart Bank before in 2007. His government came and then they abrogated that contract. He mentioned Bamboe Polyclinic. Poly the project was promised under the NCD, yet the big money was never delivered. It was President Nana and Dr. Akupuadu, the Okafoli president who gave us Savannah region, a region of which our own brother, your mama, could not deliver to us so many years that he has been with us. Mm. When he mentioned Chibrinya Road, the last time the issue of uh, Chibrinya University was mentioned, in fact, he took the intervention of my former dean, Dr. Robert Susanna Flem of uh, UDS to make that statement for that area on the floor of parliament. Where was he in parliament? Parliament is a serious business, and people who are focused are supposed to be in parliament and represent their people. So if he could not defend or make cases for those people in parliament, he has to take the support of his colleague MP for Pinduri, I mean, he's a former MP for Pinduri, to make a case that he bring your husband to have a person with electricity. I mean, that is quite unfortunate. We need more serious people to be in parliament to advocate and advance the cause of the people of Bola Bamboy. But the yes, NDC has been in power. If you come and like, I mean, there's so much you can say. I'm sure you heard people come out to receive what he said. There are lots of people. Well, some have, also, some have also confirmed what, what he's what saying. He think, for instance, it wasn't him that gave us the city. It wasn't him that gave us uh, resources to work at the place. There is an NGO being headed by one man, the somebody at the Provanoji. His name is Alaji Dr. Talia. He is the brain behind the personalization of Bamboo Polyclinic, and not him. Mm. Even with that, he claimed they did it. It wasn't done by them. They promised Okay, so let, let me ask you this. Let, let me ask you this. You're saying, you, you keep reiterating that it's only the MPP that has done anything in Bole Bamboy. The NDC side also says, I mean, they have been in power throughout. I'd like to find out from you, um, should you become member of parliament? Should you become member of parliament? And, and the hurdle is pretty huge what you have to climb, what you have to surmount. Going back to the figures, you would notice that the last time in the last election, um, 
Yusuf Suleiman has scored about 67 plus percent. Almost, he says now he's targeting set at least 70 percent. The MPP person secured about 32.32 percent of the votes. It's about half of what Yusuf Suleiman had. And he said in that interview that even that person could have done better than you. So two questions. Do you think you can surmount that hurdle? One. And two, what will you do differently? Should you get the nod in that constituency? What will you do differently? To cap it off, before I, I cap off with Suleiman. Yeah, then it will interest you to note one thing. Whenever there's an internal context in your opponent's fight, and you realize your opponent is supporting one side of the device, it will tell you where it stands at. So, I mean, I'm not surprised by the comments you made. Uh, it's only been psychological about the comments. Uh, we are very much aware of uh, attempted interference you are in our general election where the other side wanted to support. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it. So for me, I am, I, I am, I am inspired by the fact that what he means a good haircut. That is inspiring me to work more and more and more. But if I win, I will go and bridge the bill, I mean, I will go and bridge the, the bridges he has created in the party in Bola Bambo. He has to be his warrior, not my victory. I was going to think this before he's coming. You see, it's a new dawn, it's a new era. The people have lived on the dark for so long a time. We are here to redeem our people. And the people believe in us. You see, maybe that didn't know the statistics uh, of the total population in Bolivar Board. If you took that data, you would realize that 74.48% of those on the register are and women. These are the people who have disappointed most in the life of our country. If you pick the 2020, I mean, if you pick the previous census, Peter, you realize that Paul is one of the most people constituted with high unemployment rate. You mm. tell that something to do with your job, to your job. Oh, oh that, reminds me, that reminds me of something. Um, now that you mentioned jo jobs, you said that um, you, would, you would create jobs, right? Did you say that if you become MP? You would advocate for more jobs. You would advocate for more jobs. Because I was going to, I was going to run it by you that creating jobs actually is not part of an MP's mandate. That was why I said advocate. I didn't say I was. I remember you said that you would, yeah. you would. But anyway, we can let that slide. Final words. My final words to the people of Bola Bambo is that I want to once again thank them for the opportunity they have given me, and I have always said and maintained that the honor that me is a matter of duty and responsibility. The trust goes to me. I'm going to ensure that their their trust doesn't go in the vein. Bola Bambo is faced by a myriad of challenges. For instance, the whole country is 38.04% of the population are agricultural people. We need to improve upon the agricultural services in our area. We need good roads in our area. Okay. We need hospital facilities. In fact, we need to address the menace of Galaxy in Bole Bamboy. It's, it's, it's the only mining hub, I mean, major mining hub in Savannah region. And thanks to the president of, of Nana Kukwadu. We have to go, Rafael. Final words. Final words. We have commission office being established in Bole. We have the precious mineral marketing uh, office established in Bole. All of this is actually done on the home staff. All right, the thank you. Mahama, which he never was able to deliver. All right, so thank you. Thank you, you Rafael Kuma. Let's hear from Yusuf Suleiman. Final words. Man, let me thank you for giving me this opportunity. And uh, to just say that Rafael is my younger brother. We'll have it cool with him. We want to motivate him, we want to encourage him to continue with his political ambition. But he should be honest, and he should try as much as possible not to copy uh, those who uh, has, they've always seen John Mahama as a, a target to insult and to denigrate in order to be appointed or to be given some recognition in their party. Those who have tried it have really failed. And a clear example is our own sister, Otiku Avisa Jaba. I mean, she decided to go after His Excellency, the former president, and to do all sorts of things with him, today as I speak, if you asked her, she would tell you that uh, she regretted doing it. And so he should stick to uh, issues and he should stop trying to denigrate or insult uh, the former president. I can assure him that we're not going to insult anybody. We are going to concern ourselves with the needs of the people. Right. And so he will go through the constituency and do a data collection of okay. the projects that I have done before he comes to uh, uh, deny them and try to be dishonest 
Okay, so, so, so Suleymana, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure we can make time at some point, whether uh, in the course of this year, the, the year has practically ended, maybe next year, and put sure. the two of you together on the show, and then you can come and show your track record, and he can also come Excellent. and dispute, and we can have a conversation. Yusuf Suleymana, I'm grateful for your time. Yusuf Suleymana yeah, is I'm member grateful. of parliament for Bole Bamboy. Uh, we were also joined by the MPP's parliamentary candidate for Bole Bamboy, Rafael Kuma. I just want this to be our national reflection as well. The National Security Ministry refuting claims that its operatives deliberately killed two youth in the Akan constituency. Too many of our young people are dying. I remember that issue in the Ashanti region where seven youth died. That issue. Later, there was some compensation on that. Those who were even interdicted, what happened to them? We can't keep losing people like this. The excess, the, 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 the excess zeal, excessive zeal. These lives have been lost. Footballers, who knows? Who knows whether these could have been the people who could have done something for our football, whether the local league or international league. You can never tell. Who knows what the future of these two young men would have been. So they were engaged in smuggling, so to speak. Even that, I don't know whether we can confirm. But if that were the issue, arrest them. Now they are dead. And if it were to happen to me or to anybody in my family, I would be aghast. Which is why if it happens to someone else, I also feel it. And all these responses coming through, well, this is Ghana. I hope in the end there will be some sane reactions to uh, these matters. But thank you very much uh, for watching the conversation, for actually staying with us for the news review. We're getting into Sports App next. This segment always brought to you by Endpoint Homeopathic Clinic. Uh, they are offering free prostate screening if you're a man, free fertility screening if you're a woman. Where you can find them? Here in Accra, it's Pentex opposite the Shell signboard. Kumasi Kronum Abwe here behind the Angel Educational Complex. There's Takradi Anaji State, Tema Community 22. Techiman Hansway and Siaman Zima. Their call lines 0244 867 068 or 0274 234 321. And Point Homeopathic Clinic, the end to chronic disease. Sports up next.